All right, guys. Good evening. Welcome to class. Good evening, sir. Good evening. You know, you can hear me, right? Okay. Just wanted to. All right. So I see only one name boldly here, and I've allowed three people in. Uh, who else is here? Punsho and uh, Can you guys hear? Can the rest of you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm here. Okay. I think there's one more person. Okay, maybe it's this problem to come. Yeah. All right. So have we all uh, successfully installed the virtual machines? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So let us uh, continue from there. All right. So let's share screen. Mm. Okay. I really want to share screen. Okay, so let's go to paintbrush. All right, guys. So from actually we'll be doing everything cybersecurity, but from now on, I need you to pay particular attention because uh, the practicals will be very, very relevant. Everybody knows theory, everybody can read the PowerPoint. But this is where your strength will be from now on as you understand the concept behind what we are trying to do in the practicals. And then also on top of that, you understand what we are actually doing. You can do at least, you have an overview understands. All right, so let's start. So a specialist in IAM will be looking today at the practicals, at least from the active directory point of view. All right. So, um, So what we are going to practice today is this. So if we assume that uh, you have that. Mm. Okay. So here we are going to have, this is our enterprise, this is our network. Please, like I said, if you don't understand anything, please always ask because you need to understand. So this is our enterprise. Enterprise actually simply means our network. All right, so for somebody to log into this network, to be able to connect to this network, so like we explained earlier on, there will be a gate. Usually when you have a gate, at the network, at the entrance of a network, like you have in your home. I mean, I mean, you could have in your home. So this gate is generally called gateway, all right? Gateway. And then there you are, as somebody who is attempting to connect to the network, all right? So at the IAM level of cybersecurity, remember that, what cybersecurity is. So at the IAM level, you are attempting to connect. You will connect through, let's say you are connecting through this device. And then you gain entrance to the enterprise. So this device, you, you are the user. This device is called the E endpoint endpoint uh, detection and response, EDR. And then this gateway is the, would house 
the table that was described earlier on. All right, so the table will look like somebody is attempting to log in from this device. Now, what are the parameters we need to allow this user into this system? That is what we talked about. A hmm? could be for uh, a, but we'll call it uh, I triple is. All right, so this user would need to be what? Identified. So for the A, we we'll need, we're going to set up what for, what's identification for this user? Because we need to know who this user is and determine whether he should be allowed into this network. So I for identity, identity identification. What do you normally use for that? Something like username would do. And then the other A, authentication. Authentication. What do you normally use for that? Something you know, something you have, something you are. For now, let's just use something we know. Password. And then what's the next one? Authorization. So how is this system going to know? How are you going to know the username and the password that is correct? This is going to know. Uh, let's check. So inside here, there is a register. Inside this gateway, I was trying to use a different color. There is a register. In this register, would have all of the, like a database of everything on this network, this enterprise, this network here. So all of the subjects, you oh, we have not talked about subjects. All of the subjects, by subjects we basically mean all of the machines, the, uh, this pen is too thick. All machines, all users, all ports on this network, and then all of the objects. All of the objects will be things that can be accessed on the network, the files, the folders. Please, if you don't understand what I mean by any of this, talk me and ask me what's the file. And all of the other resources, the internet that you want to resource, the database, everything that you can possibly access on the network, they are all part of your objects, all right? So this list, this table contains the list of all subjects, all objects, all attributes of everything on this network. Okay, what I'm just trying to bring out from here is when this system wants to confirm the identity, the authentic, authorized authentication here, it's going to come to this list and find out this user that says he's acting at the gate, if he registered here, he will find that, oh, this user is registered here. If he, if it's not registered here, of course, he will not be allowed in. We don't know you. Then he'll be blocked. All right? Well, if he's registered here, and then the he will check. Enter your password so that we can authenticate you. And then this is where it will come to check that the password actually exists and is correct. And then... Once he's allowed in, this, re this register also contains the authorization. Once you are allowed in, what and what are you allowed to access on this enterprise? So there are all kinds of things represented by star, represented by, okay, anyhow you want to represent them. Different kinds of what? Objects, folders, files, and so on. So what and what? according to this register has been assigned to your name that this guy, once he comes in, he's allowed here, he's allowed here, but he's not allowed there, not, and so on. So that list, those details are also in the register. And then the auditing are also in the register. So what is this register? This register is so, so important for what you can see from this explanation. Within Windows Enterprise, within Windows Networks, Generally, this register is called enterprise directory. Enter, I hope we are recording, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, thank you. So, what do I share? So, um, that register is generally called enterprise directory. But within Windows Enterprise, because you have Linux Enterprise and other kinds of enterprise, within Windows Enterprise, this enterprise directory is specifically called uh, domain controller. I mean, uh, Active Directory. Active Directory. So now you know that the Active Directory that I'll be working on today is that register of all subjects, all objects of everything on the network. Without doubt, you don't have your AAA. You don't have that because where would the system be able to cross-check that your username is correct, your password is correct, once you are allowed in, this is what you're allowed to do. And then once you are in, we'll monitor, this is what we should monitor. Maybe every successful thing, every successful task you carried out, maybe we shouldn't monitor it because you are allowed as why. Well. But everything you try to carry out and you say, maybe we should monitor it. And then we are going to see the practicals of all of this today. You get it now. So in order for us to have this enterprise where we can practice, the first thing we need to do is to set up this what? Directory in Windows. Enterprise, this directory is called Active Directory. So we are going to set up our Active Directory now. As for this enterprise server, enterprise network that we already set up, we are going to use the server that you created. All right. And then for this EDR, we are going to use the client that you, you have created. So through your client, you are going to set up your user details in server. And then through your client, you are going to attempt to log into the enterprise, in other words, to the server and see what comes out based on or depending on what you already said in the server. All right. So as an IAAA engineer, you should maybe not necessarily know how to set it up, but once it is set up, then you should know how to manage, how to manage it. Before I clean this, let me also remind you that uh, under here, we are going to do the practicals of uh, authorization. Authorization. So what does that mean? It means that I'm going to take you into where to set the security, security rules for the entire Enterprise. Where do you say you are a security cyber security? You are a security person. Where do you say the security rule that will affect the entire network? For example, security rule like if anybody attempts to log on to this system, once he misses the password the first time, lock him out. Don't allow him to try the second time. Password complexibility. And then you know, so many things you can set around security. Authorization. We'll check it there. And then after we have set all of that, we're actually going to see. Once the everything you do is trailed, monitored, and logged in, how do we now see the log of under auditing or accounting? How do we now see the log events to see that, oh, Mr. Ade attempted to log to connect to the printer at 3 p.m. on Monday. Meanwhile, he's not allowed access to printer. Why is he doing it? All right. So it's not enough to set your security. You should be able to audit to do the accounting to see, ah, 30 people attempted to connect to our network through port 30. Ah, there's a serious thing. So we should focus, we should concentrate. In fact, we should go to, get a third party vendor to come and help us fortify our port 30 properly. Because if 30 people attempted in one day and they couldn't get in, maybe 300 people will attempt the next day and they might be able to get in. So it tells us where to focus on in terms of securing our system. From Remember there are different levels of security, but this security is specifically from the viewpoint of access management, access control. So everything about this is controlling access. Remember there is the other part that is a network, there is the application we've done that, there is the 
sock and so on and so forth. So everything that you have learned here, that you would have learned here in the next one or two weeks, that is what you will now be taking to. So within the enterprise network that we are using to learn today, we learned all of that. But this is the equivalent of, uh, this is what we are taking to cloud. And by the time we get to cloud, this is our enterprise network here. Enterprise that we call Windows Enterprise. It will now become our Azure, Azure Cloud. And the gateway, the entrance that has the list of all of the objects, subjects, attributes, who is allowed in, who is allowed to do what. What, what do we call what did we call this one again? This table that has what did we call that feature, that service that allow that holds this list? The enterprise directory or the enterprise register. Active directory is more correct. Active directory. Yeah, active, active directory. directory. Yeah. So in the place of active directory, there we are going to have what we call here IAM, and this is what we are going into cloud to learn. But if you don't learn this here, in fact, this is what we are learning here. The only difference is that what we are learning under IAM will be more, will be broader than what we learned here. So by the time we get to cloud, I'm going to assume, not assume because we would have done it. I'm not going to repeat everything we would have learned here. You would have already known it. We'll only be learning the additional features of IAM in cloud that were not available here. So it's just that the cloud version is much greater. Uh, this one is much less. Greater is, uh, yeah, it's much less than this. So if you don't understand this, you will not be able to understand. So it's the same thing. Active directory here, IAM here, all right? All of the tools you'll be learning here, inside here, they'll be inside IAM here. And then we'll learn additional tools. So once you can do it for Windows Enterprise, then you can do it for Azure. We'll just learn the additional tools that are cloud native, but not enterprise -based. All right. So with that foundation, if there are no questions, let us now go and set up our uh active directory within our windows enterprise all right so i go to my machine i go to my virtual environment can you see my virtual environment so what i did was to set up the machine just like you downloaded and you set up so my own the server i have called domain controller and the, i set up two clients all right so uh, let us do it. Is anybody practicing with me or do you just want to watch and then uh, understand? Nobody's practicing. So I, I'll be fast in doing it then so that, okay, so let's go. So I start my, uh, I hope everybody was able to, I've asked that before everybody said they were able to install, right? So yeah, I, I'm going to try to, to do it with you. To come along to practice? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, so I'll be slow then so that you can practice. All right, so I come here and I right click and I say start, normal start for my server. That's the server. All right, so I can minimize this now and then I can look at this. Is my server starting? Yes. Now, when I say server, Server is a loose word. Depending on what I load in the server, a server could become my internet server, my proxy server, my database server, my mail server, my any anything server. However, when I specifically load this Active Directory service into a server so that that server becomes my Active Directory server, then I start to call that server my domain controller. So the domain controllers is the server that is running this special table, this special database of everything and from where we can manage the complete access from identification all the way to uh, auditing of the entire Windows server, all right? So you get where the term domain controller came from. It is the server that is running my active directory. All right, all right, so let's come back to my server. 
So my server is loaded now. Where are you, server? So I come here. Yeah. So let's log in. So I come here and I do uh, control or delete. My administrator password is the same for all of my system. Daily 2024 hash. So I'm logged in now. So as it is now, it is an ordinary server. It's just a server. In order to make this server my domain controller, in other words, in order to install Active Directory services inside, and then it becomes my domain controller, and therefore I can use it for my IEEE practice, for my access control, I will have to come here and say add roles. But before this, uh, let's confirm, let's quickly revise what we did the last time. So we'll go to local server, uh, we see that last time we did this, it's still there. That is fine. This is fine. The IP address we installed last time is still valid. All right. So uh, one more thing I need us to do. Then we'll come to machines. And then we'll go to settings. Just like we did last time, we'll go to network. Last time we took host only adapter, right? Please go and change that host only adapter now to internal network click and see if you can find the internal network kind of network card amongst all of this internal network Bro. yeah last time we chose a bridge adapter oh okay yes change it to internal network now. okay yeah internal network and just ensure that the cable is connected. Usually it is, and then you say, okay, fine. So we have assigned IP address to the network card. What type of network card are we using? The internal uh, network, the internal network, because we are creating a network that is enterprise outside of the internet, it's internal. All right, so having done that, we go back to dashboard and we see add rules and features. All right, we see next, rule-based or feature-based, well, leave it as it is. There's no need to, to be ready on the this, it's not a waste time. Just click next, next. Here, this is where you need to be careful to make sure you select the right thing. What is the service that we install on the server in order to make the server our domain controller? That service is Active Directory. Actually, the full name is Active Directory Domain Services. You know what we called enterprise earlier on? In fact, we have it here. What we called enterprise within Windows operating system, within Windows technology, with this Windows terminology, we call enterprise domain. So we can remove the word enterprise and put domain there as far as we are within Windows. But in Linux or any other environment, it may not be called domain, but for Windows, it's domain. And I hope you know why we are particular about Windows, 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 because we are going to learn Azure. Windows is a child of Azure. Azure is the father, Windows is a child by the same company. Anyway, so Active Directory Domain Services, you take that and you see, install this service on my server in order to make it my domain controller. However, this service by itself does not work alone. It's the general. It will always go with the captain, which is the DSCP, and the lieutenant, which is the DNS. These three services must go together. And by the way, I have this in the note for you. Everything is already in the note, all right? So once I click these three services, I say next, and I say, these other ones, they are beyond the scope of this training because we are not training you to become Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. So we'll just take the path that is relevant for uh, IEM engineering. So we'll say next. And then we'll say the active directory domain services store information about users, about just like we said earlier on, it stores all of that information, all right? The list that we talked about. And then we'll say next. And then we say install everything. Restart destination server automatically if required. Okay, let's, let's just take that. 
uh, if a restart is requested, this server restarts automatically. Yes, don't, don't wait for me to restart it. And now finally we say install. So you are you are now building your enterprise environment by putting that gateway, that gateway with that will do your authentication, your authorization, your identification, and your audit. All right. Any questions so far? No. Oh, okay. So, uh, Prof. So, is, when you um, I think my system is kind of slow, so I was just trying to follow. Okay. Behind. So when you go to the dashboard, you selected um. Uh, oh add. What do you see? Uh, add rows. Yes, add rows. Okay. Pick so, add rows. Yeah. When I go to that, I have um. Oh God, my system is. Yeah, the, the rate of your system is good. You'll not be able to catch up. Yeah, it's so just, slow. Don't yes. worry. Yeah. Just go on. Yeah. Yeah. Just focus on this so that you get it. Mm-hmm. All right, so it says I have done it for you. However, one configuration is required and it's telling me complete DHCP configuration. I'll just click that. Did I click? Configuration required. Installation was successful, but okay. So maybe I didn't click, right? Um, it's busy. Hmm. Is it busy? Okay, so have one installed. So in Windows, usually every time you install, the following step is configure. Have one installed the services that we need. We now want to configure the services. So, and it, it will suggest by itself what you should do. But why is it? Add rule with that, not responding. Okay. It still doesn't respond. Installation in progress, okay. Okay, so the next thing I should do now is promote this server to become a domain controller. All right, so I click that. Now, watch it. I'm going to come here and I'm going to take add new forest and I'll give it a name. Let's give it a name, uh, uh, cyber. Class dot local. If it was registered on the internet, I'll call it dot com. Facebook.com, cybercard or whatever. Let's just give any name. You can give any name. You don't have to use mine. All right. So you take add a new forest and then you give a name. Then you say next. All right. So we are configuring our enter. So from now on, if I ask you what's the name of our enterprise network, it is cyberclass.local. So we're configuring it. If we're working for an enterprise organization, that will be their name. So the next thing is, let us give a password to the person that is able to come here to change things. Remember that amongst the servers on our network, this is the most powerful. Domain controller. Domain means like a kingdom. Controller means king. This is the king of the kingdom as far as security and, in fact, everything else is concerned. So let us give a password that the administrator of this kingdom can use to access this crown. Uh, again, I'll use my regular password, daily2020. Daily2024. Ash. 
the May 2024. And then we say next. Uh, delegation, we don't need that. Next. Uh, net bios. Don't worry about these details. They are too technical. Just say next, next, next. So we are waiting for it to fetch the net bio domain name. And then once that is ready, the next bot will come up. All right. So that has been taken. Cyber class. Next. And then next, and then next. All right, what is it saying? Configuration required. We've, we've been through here. What are we now? Uh, pre prerequisite needs to be validated. Yeah, go on and validate before the Active Directory Domain Services system. He says all prerequisite checks passed successfully. All right, so I just say install. So this will now complete the configuration of my Active Directory services on the server. And once that config configuration completes, my server becomes my domain controller. In other words, it means that I now have an, a domain or loosely speaking, specifically speaking domain, loosely speaking an enterprise. All right, so now that we have an enterprise, let us go and learn security around this enterprise. Use this enterprise or actually this domain to learn how to secure a domain. All right, so that's going to take a while to complete. While that one is completing, any question? At some point, it should ask us, we need, this system needs to restart. And because we clicked, go ahead and restart anytime you need to, it's going to restart by itself. All right, so yeah, we'll just patiently wait for that. Configuring the DNS service, control and so forth. Uh, yes, we start. All right, our server is restarting to become our domain control. All right, so this is your IT background. On your, in your resume, particularly if you are coming into IT for the first time, uh, it may not be so beautiful if you put it in your resume. Cybersecurity, from what background? From where did you come to become a cybersecurity person? So this one is a good start to say, I started by learning how to set up enterprise networks and manage them, how to promote. I'll give, I'll give the syntax, to, the format to you to put it in your resume how to promote a domain, uh, a server to domain controller by installing just the experience we've had here, especially when you go ahead to practice it over and over by yourself and you can claim it, it will form your background, the basis through which you came into IT. So if you say you, do, you did this for the first one year or six months, and then you now went ahead to learn cybersecurity, it makes more sense. 
than ju just jumping into cybersecurity without even knowing what a domain is or what an enterprise is or what a ADS is and all of that. All right. How many months or how many years of experience you claim under here may vary. We don't all have to write the same thing. So I'm going to show you where to configure the security features. Anything you are able to configure there, we, you put it in your resume. If you're able to configure 20 things there, put all the 20 in your resume. When we list all of the 20, we'll give it to chat DPT and say, hey, help us condense this 20, uh, this 20 task or responsibility into four points. Chat GPT will summarize them all into four points and then you copy the four points for that customize it to suit your own specific situation and put it in your resume. But if we do it in class and you don't go ahead to practice by yourself and then you are just copying and pasting, then you'll not be able to defend it in, in the, at interviews. So it is what you practice that you can defend, not what you copied. And of course, in our three hour, you have a whole week to yourself. So in three hours of class, I can practice. I can show you what to practice, but I can't practice everything one by one with you. And just give you an overview. All right, guys. Uh, let's go into our domain controller now. So we go to input. I will see. Uh, control delete. See, can you see that cyber class? It's not logging us into cyber class domain. And then our password to log into the domain, not to this EDR anymore, but to the domain, to the enterprise. Remember that drawing? This is now inside the domain, inside the enterprise. So day, day 2024. All right, we are now inside the domain. Okay. This is what was showing the first time, but now I expect more to show, more tools to show here because we are now active directory. So I expect the services that we loaded to be displayed here. So I'm going to see D, DNA, DHCP, uh, AD, DDS, look at them. These are the services that we installed. All right, so if we're training you to become a Windows Server Administrator, we'll go deeper here, but these are the services. So everywhere you see this, it means that that server that, that is running that is the domain controller, Active Directory Domain Services. All right? All right. Uh, why is this caution sign showing? It means that there is still one more job to do, complete DHCP configuration. Okay, let's do it. We'll click that. I will say next. I will say... Uh, commit. We just say commit. Nothing to do here. And then we'll close. It's done. The caution sign is gone. All right. So we are ready. We have our enterprise now. Our domain is ready because the domain controller is there. All right. So let's start. Let's start to use it. So the first thing we want to do is create a user so that we can test identity and authentic authentication. So we'll go to tools. Can you see that? You want me to maximize? Is it good? I can maximize this to cover the whole screen if you want. I do sometimes it's uh, so I'll say full screen. Uh, okay, control F. Uh, view. I just, all uh, right, it's covering the whole screen. But you don't have to, I'm, I'm just trying to prove to you that. Uh, we can arrange it in such a way that somebody looking at it from, other than us, will not even know that it's a virtual machine. It will just cover the full screen like a regular laptop or a regular machine. Anyway, so let's go to work. So we'll come to tools. Of all of these tools, the one we want to use now is uh, 
Active Directory users and computers. So we take that one and then we go to the enterprise, the domain that we are concerned about, which is cyber class. So we take this. In cyber class, we see, I'll open it here. We see built in. Uh, let me come back to that for now. Let me just come to users. These are the ready made users, the built in users for this enterprise. Of course, the most powerful and original user of this system is the administrator. The administrator can do all things on this system, all right? Other kinds of users are set publishers, DHCP administrator. So we can hire a young uh, administrator who is only about six months experience and say, you know what? We're not going to give you the whole role. Just manage a part of this uh, just administer a part of the administrator's functions, all right? So we make that person a member of the administrator's group. All right, maybe we'll come back there for now. I come to use that and I right click, I say new. New what? New user, so I come to user. I say, okay, there's a new employee in this enterprise. His name is uh, Ayo, Ayo Ojo. So I need to create a user account for him so that he's able to Login, it's able to do IAAA to come into our enterprise, into our domain. All right, so this has to create account for him because if I want to secure the network, I don't even know how to create account. Then how can I secure it? IO do is the name. And then his login name will be IO. Please remember that, I will not remember. IO, that's his login name. All right, here, I'm going to give him any password, maybe anything, maybe any, let me just say, it doesn't matter. All right, here I say, user must change password as soon as he logs on. It's a requirement as, cyber, as part of cybersecurity. You don't give your user's password and then you know the password, no. Otherwise, when it happens that the user uh, commits a crime, so to speak, you'll be held responsible because it's not just the user that knows his password, you also know the password, all right? So you want to say user must change password at next logon. Sometimes you may say password cannot be changed. So whether the user likes it or not, he must use that password. Then you may say password never expires, but that's not a good cyber security measure. measure. You must set password to expire uh, periodically, maybe ideally every 30 days, all right? But if you want to go, for some reason you don't want that, then you can say password never expires, all right? And then if you are my trainee and I give you this and all of a sudden, uh, at the end of the month you have not paid, I'll just come here and say disable, account disabled. So even though your password and username is valid, you are no longer able to log in to my account. I didn't know about security, you know about security, at least internally to secure your, net, your domain internet. All right, so you can try any of those. For now, we'll just say user must uh, change password at net logon, and then we'll say finish. That's it. We've created a password, all right? And then we can come also and go further. We can actually double click. We can go to the person we just created the account for. Ayodo, and then we can go to Ayodo, can double click, and then we can see remote access and all of that. But what I really want now is account. Ayodo, login hours. Ayodo, if he comes to work on Sunday, he should, he should not be able to log into the system. So I select the whole of Sunday and say log on denied. If he comes on Saturday, he should not be able to log into the system. I say log on denied. Even during work days, by five o'clock, you should close, but I give him up to six o'clock. Anything after six o'clock, you should not be able to log in. So what is this? Is this authorization? Yes, you can come into the system, but once you come in, this is what you are allowed to do. This is what you are not allowed to do. So we are setting authorization. 
Uh, but I'm not going to implement this now because today is Saturday. So let me add Saturday. In fact, maybe I should not even implement any of So that we can log in, otherwise we will not be able to log in. So permit logon for everything. All right. So I am protecting my organization's network by this domain administrative administration task. All right, all right, all right. Apply and I say okay. Now let us go and test. Where can this user log in to see whether the things we have set here actually apply? All right. So this is what we need the client, the client system that we created. So that will be our endpoint from which we log into this domain. From which we log into this domain. And then to see, to test the configurations we have done on the domain control. All right, so now let's go to our client and set it up for that purpose. So uh, right control F will minimize this. And then I can go to my, where's my other machine? Uh, I'll just leave it minimized so that I don't keep. If it were managed system, it would have been okay, but I have many systems, so I'll be jumping from people. So I've come back to my machine, my, my virtual environment, and I take uh, any of them, which of them? Maybe I take my client too, and I say start that. Ah, there's something we have not done, very major. Uh, oh, oh, we've done it. We've created the domain, yeah. I will call the domain cyber, what do we call it? Cyber class dot local. So the first thing we want to do on our client is remove our client from a standalone client and add the client to the domain so that it becomes, that's why it's called client, it becomes a member of the many computers that will form that domain. All right. So go log in there. So the local admin to this particular computer, this is local admin to this computer as a standalone. It's uh, always daily 2024. 20, now, I want to add this computer to the domain so that it is not governed and ruled by that thing. So whatever law we set in the domain controller would be binding on this computer, all right? So that, that's the only way we can use it to log in and practice, just like you have a regular network, all right? To do that, we'll come to, let us set it up. So to set up our computer, two things we have to do, first of all. First of all, we we'll check our settings and check our network card and make sure that it is what? internal network and just confirm that the cable is plugged in. The next thing we want to do is give it an IP address. So we come here and we say uh, network setting, uh, our Ethernet card, change adapter options for this computer we right click we take properties, we take TCP, and then we take properties, and then we'll give an IP address that is in the same family as the other one. That one was 192.168.100.10. So let's give 192.168.100.10. One, one it's in the same family, all right? For the gateway, remember what gateway is, what I told you gateway is, between these two computers, because it, this will be the only two computers on the network, which of them should mount the gate? Is it this client or the domain controller? The main controller. The main. All right, correct. So we are going to use the domain controller IP here, 192.168.100.10. All right. 
When did we install our DNS service? When we installed the domain controller, you remember we take, took DNS, DHCP, and ADDS? So where's our, where's our DNS server? It's our domain controller as well. Okay, 192.168.100.10. That's it. All right, so we have met the two criteria to join computer to domain. Do you want... Uh, all right. So we are set. Now let us go and add this computer, join this computer to that domain. All right. We have prepared our network card. We have uh, connected the cable and we have assigned an IP address that uh, is recognizable. You don't have to do ping because it may be too technical for you. You don't have to. But uh, for me, I'll just say, let me just try that. It actually seems, it will save me a lot of troubleshooting later. So I just come here and say, CMD, CMD, command prompt. And I say, can you see your the other system on this network? First of all, what's your own IP address? IP config uh, 192.168. Oh, good boy, you took it. Can you see the other network, the other system on this network? Ping uh, 192.168. A dot one hundred dot ten. Oh, he's seeing it. He send the signal, and the other one is replying. I'm here. I am here. I am here. Reply. Oh, this beautiful. Okay, so everything is fine. So we are now ready. I mean, you don't have to do this, but like I said, as a technical person, I just want to make sure there is a link. All right. So finally, to join this computer to the domain, I'm going to say this PC. I right click this PC. I take properties, then I go to uh, advanced system settings. I go to computer name, change, all right? And then I come to domain. Make this computer a member of the domain. What's the name of that domain? Cyber class dot local. All right. Join it to that domain and say, okay. It says, okay, if you are the right person that has the authority to do this, then what's your username and password? On that computer, my username is uh, administrator and my password is daily2024. All right. Oh, welcome to that. So it has accepted the computer. Now it must restart for it to be baptized and brought into the family. All right, restart now. That is it. Don't be discouraged. You may try it first time, second time. And if you have any issue trying to do this, just take a screenshot, put it there, and then I will help you to we'll troubleshoot and then see what the problem is. All right. Any questions so far? So now you have you know how to set up a domain, how to add computers to domain, how to join clients to domain, how to test the connectivity between computers on the domain using ping. And in case you do not know the IP address of a computer, how to find out by running IP config. Hmm. The cyber security person, you find a way when you introduce yourself to mention all of this. Even before the interview proper, you already listed as, ah, this guy knows something technical, so it's an advantage. All right, so now, can you see that if we go on now, we're actually logging to the local admin. So we don't want to log on to this local system. We want to use this system to log on to the network. So we're going to come here and say, other user. And then you see it now, that if you enter your username and password now, it's going to log you in to where? To the domain. For you to log into the domain, you must be a user that is already created in the domain. If I enter Aki and I enter my regular password, I'm not a user in the domain. It's going to say, I don't know you. I don't know you because 
Remember the IAAA, the identity, it will check that list. I don't want to be going back and forth, but to remember the Active Directory list we saw earlier on what we created the user, it will check and it will not find Akin there. So it will tell you, I don't know you, I can't let you in. All right, if I now say, oh, well, I, I do have an account there. My account name is Ojo and my password there is, I need to go and check and say, uh, what's the user name? Ayo. 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 Okay. okay. Ayo. And then I'll say, and then say, yes, I know you. But the instruction I have is that you must change password as soon as you log in. User must change password before they can sign. I say, yes, that, that's the instruction I give. So what we set there is working here. And then I will now say my new password now will be day, day, May 2024. Ash. Day, May 2024. Ash. And then I'll say hey, to log me in. Your password has been changed and you are now being logged in successfully. All right. This is just there for me to do my testing. Whatever I set there. I want to see whether it is working or not. I come here, I try it, and I see. If I block Ayo there, I come here, I try it, I see that really Ayo is not allowed to go in because I blocked it there. All right, so I put that down so that I can add it to my resume to say 40 things I can do to secure my... In fact, take that, take, take that one down as assignment. 40 things I, I can do to secure my domain internally. So one is what we just did. All right. Okay. So while that one is going on here, yeah, let's go back to the domain controller. So that will be the server person. So what's my domain? This is my domain controller. So let's log back in and let me show you around. So come here and then I see the 2024. All right, so I come back here and I go to my server manager and then I go to tools and I go to, let's go back to Active Directory users and computer. I go to my domain, my enterprise. Here I see built-in. All right, let me show you this. Building. So what does it do? Domain local. So these are different groups, ready made groups. So there's a group called administrators. What does that mean? Let's see what that means. Control A, Control C, Control B. Administrators have complete and unrestricted access to the entire computer and the entire enterprise. So that's administrator. So if I want to make IO, if I want to give IO complete and unrestricted access to everything, I'll just come here and I say add IO to. So I come here and I say add IO. All right. Check that the name exists. Yeah, IO do exist. I'll take that and say add. I'll say, okay. Now, if you if IO signs it, it's no longer working just as IO. It's now working as administrator because I have made IO a member of the administrator's group. You see it now? So this kind of access is what you call role-based. Everything will be learning in cyber security. Everything we can practice here. But uh, let me not digress too much. Let me just focus on IE. All right. So like I was saying earlier, I say IO is too, uh -uh, what does it know? It's just six, six months experience. It cannot be complete administrator now. So I'm going to remove him from here. And I'm going to say, IO, you are just going to support me to do backups. Every evening when we close, just run this uh, uh, script to backup file. So I say backup operators. 
What can, who are they? Of course, the name already says it, but just in case you want to learn more. Backup operators can override security restrictions for the sole purpose of backing up and restoring files. So I'll say, members of my backup operators, people, at me as I, I can send that the administrator is going to do backup, I'll add a uh, IO. All right, check. And then I'll say add. So IO is now a backup. So there are different guests, event log readers. Who can read event logs? Please meet yourself, I'm echoing. All right. So if I want you to be able to, so this built-in is basically ready-made groups. So this is how we, all the English will be speaking under role-based access control. This is just the practice. This is it. All right. So if I want to make somebody guess, I want to give somebody the authority and authorization to be able to perform log user responsibilities or to be able to perform a, a RDS endpoint a print operator to operate printer. If I don't give you access here, if I don't authorize you here, you'll not be able to do it, all right? It's authorization. It's authorization. Otherwise, if you are just a mere user, then you'd only be able to do what a typical user can do without extra privilege. Users are prevented from making accidental or intentional system-wide changes. I can run most applications, but you are prevented from doing so many things as a user. Well, maybe not so many, but system-wide. You can do things that can affect you, your account, and your responsibilities as far as the access control allows but not system-wide. All right, so do you get this now? Do you get the concept of the roles are already defined? So it's just a matter of assigning a user to that role so that that user can, uh, can ascend to that responsibility and be able to perform the role there. All right, so it's part of uh, that. And then you have computers. This will show you all of the 300 computers, 700 computers, 500 computers that come together to form your domain. In our own case, we have only one computer, right? That's why we're seeing only one here. All right, if we don't like the name of this computer, we can change it to, we can change it to client one. But uh, don't let me bother you with that. You can change client one, client two, client three, or manager one, supervisor two, you can change all of them. How many domain controllers do we have on this system? Of course, only one. That's the one domain control. All right? Foreign security principle. Of course, anything security, that's where we really want to see. Not all these ones that I'm showing. All right? So security is showing here. Okay, but nothing to show you. All right, so the next place here is users. Now, just like we have predefined groups, we also have predefined users. All right? So there are users that by they are already, some users are already predefined as guest, domain guest, domain controllers, domain. Uh, this is not just users, actually. This is object generally, but don't worry about it. It's a bit out of scope. But what should really concern ourselves about is when we create a new user, we can determine what that new user can do on the network. What do we do? What, what do we call that? You determining what a user can do, we call that authorization. And then assigning that authorization so that when that user does login, he's restricted to what he can do based on the authorization that is there. All right. The rest of these are technical, but we'll just go into account. And then it says uh, password never expire. Yes, I can say that. So from that time on, the password will never expire. Again, it's not a good security measure. I can come down and say for this user, uh, disable the account. Or for this user, store, store password using reversible encryption. When we do cyber security in theory, we we'll, we'll talk and talk and talk and talk about this. You may know, but the implementation does come here and click this. Of course, I'm tempted to explain it now, but we'll do it later. All right. The whole of, uh, we'll do that later. Or oh, account expires at the end of one month. So I come here and say account expires. I come here. 
and I see at the end of uh, February, uh, whatever, just take there. So without me coming back to do anything, at the end of February, this account will no longer serve higher. You will come in, enter its username and password, it has expired. You will have to pay for this one. Any question with all of that? Was that clear? Yeah, it's clear. Okay, so now you know what I mean by practice, practice, practice. When I say these are the things you come here to open one by one and understand not necessarily everything, but as much of them as you want to play. For example, you should be able to come here and create a new account, essentially. So user, new, new user, and then we should be able to do Tom, Tom, Larry, for example, and then create account for Tom, and then we'll say next, and then we'll say uh, day, daily 2024, uh, daily 2024, uh, since we already tried that, we know how it was, we want to try something else, uh, path will never expire, but even if it does, maybe in 30 days, uh, user cannot change password. Yeah, we just leave everything else and then we create. And then having created Larry, we now say we want to make Larry an administrator so that we'll see what he can do. Or we even disable the account. Let's disable the account. All of this, all of the selected object has been disabled. All right. So let's now go and log in as Larry. That's the practice that I mean. So come here now to our client. And then uh, who is currently logged in? Uh, let's come to Impute, Keyboard, Control, or Delete. And then uh, let's sign out whoever I signed in now. And now uh, let's log in, not as IO, so as other user. All right, Who's, what's the username? Tom. And what's the password? Uh, daily 2020. Was it 24? Your account has been disabled. Was that not what we said? And then he'll pick up his phone and call the administrator. Ah, I just came in. I don't know. I said, go and see the manager. Because this, this is our work at cyber security. Go and see the HR. Your staff letter is waiting. That's why your account has been disabled. Well, if that was a mistake, let's correct it now and see how that works. And say, oh, sorry. Then we'll come back here and we'll see for Tom, right? We see enable account. All right? So it is done. So if we now say, go back, you resolve your issue with uh, HR, go back and try again. We'll come back here and then he tries again. Day, day 2024, hash. And then he sees that. It's not allowed it. All right. But if you want to explain that in theory, we'll be talking and talking and talking. See, the practical is just a click of a button. So now that you have an idea what the technical people do behind the door, and then the ones that you cannot do, you can actually, even when you put it on paper and recommend that, you can actually go beyond if you want to actually do the clicking. And that's what the parents are looking for. All right. Questions? Uh, what else do we want to know here? Let's practice more. Let's go back to our server. Uh, let's practice more. So please double click each of these places and try your hands on as many of them as you understand. You don't have to understand everything. Okay. So Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I missed the last class. I think the one on Sunday. So I've been able to download the virtual machine, but all of these that I'm seeing here, it's a little new to me. So I don't know. So is that uh, something I'm missing? Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess you'd have to follow from where you missed. You missed the last one. Watch that video. Oh, it's, then... it's, it's in the video because I watched it, but I'll probably have to rewatch it if it's there. No, if, if what is there. No, what we are doing now is not in the video. Now, we'll not be repeating what we already have in the video. No, I'm saying how to, like, because all these ones that I'm seeing now, I'm not sure if it's in the other video, but if you if say it's there. No, it's I watched not it. in the video. That's why we are doing it now, because it's not in that video. 
So we are continuing from where we stopped that video. Where we stopped that video was where we created the machines. Okay. So okay. we continued today from where we created those machines. Okay, 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 no problem. Yeah. So Correct. this one you are saying now we have not done it before. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. And if it's not making sense right now, if you by I assure you by the time you watch the video three times, four times, over and over and over, it will make sense. And then if it okay. still does not make sense, share on the screen. My assistant lecturer is there. Uh you know and they will help you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> assistant lecturer, why are you laughing now? Hmm? I wish, sir. <laughs> uh, you are, it's just that you don't know. <laughs> yes, any more interaction, any more questions? All right, if there are no more questions, let's do a little bit more and then we'll go on a break and then we'll come back and continue. All right, so let's close this page. All right, so let's go to a different role now. So we'll go back to tools. Instead of Active Directory users and computers, let's go to Let's go to local security policy or group. Let's go to local first. Um, or should it? Let's go to local. Local security policy. All right. So can you see security settings? You don't know what we are. We are security people now. Look at the settings here. Again, learning everything here is out of scope. I'll just show you the ones that are that are within your scope in the note. So come here. So by the time we get here, we're going to be talking a lot of theories about account policies, password policies. Let's start from the top. Account policy, password policy. Can you see that? All right. Uh, now, what we said here under local security policy affects only this local machine, does not affect the entire domain. All right. So let us set stuff that affect the entire domain. All, all of the computers, all of the users, all of the objects, all of the subjects within this domain of 737 computers. We want to set, we want to administer all of those infrastructures from here. So we'll go to uh, tools. Instead of going to local policy, all right, because that one affects only this particular computer and has been locked, we'll now go to group. Policy. Uh, before I do this, let me quickly let me bring up the notes. Uh, let me press the note to... mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me see. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think my, my notes. I think the notes I'm sharing. Yes. Abiana, okay. So, uh, Maya, I can see, see, sir. Okay. So, this is the part we have, uh, this is the part we have done, right? So, we're not doing this part now, group policy security. Group policy security settings. That's the part I want to show you. And I just wanted to show you that how to follow the note. So we just promoted the server to domain controller by following that. Okay, create the configure virtual machines to communicate with each other. This was where we did the pinging. All right. And then this was where we assigned the IP address 192.168.100.10 to the server. And then 192.168.100.10.11 to the uh, client. So everything is in the note. All right. So DHCP, ADDS. 
network administration. So this is how we created uh, the network adapter and where you use internal network. You took internal net network instead of a bridge adapter. So this is now domain policy management. All right, so let's follow this note now. We say go to group policy management. Can you see it now? Expand forest, expand uh, domain, expand domain name, expand domain controller, right click, default domain controller, and then edit. Click computer configuration and expand policy. So all of this is what I'm going to show you how to do now. This is just a shortcut. Let me show you how to do all of that. All right. So what we said there was come to group policy management. All right. We said expand this. All right. Expand domain. All right. Click the do our domain. What's our domain? It's not a cyber class local. All right. So we click that. And then it says default domain policy. So we right click default domain policy and then we click edit. And then it brings us here. All right. So under here, what do we want to configure? Is it related to computer configuration or related to user configuration? We want to configure things related to computer. So we'll come to policies and then we'll come to software policies. Uh, maybe we come to Windows policies. Uh, the one I want to show you is to be under Windows policy. Uh, security settings. Yes, here. Yeah, it wasn't easy getting there, right? I know, but it's in the note. You can follow the note. Security settings. Look at it. Security settings is the last thing you click. Yeah. You want us to do it again? Or you can yeah, follow yes, this? Yes, bro. Okay. So let's go to server. Close this window. And then we'll go to Let's see if we can do it side by side. Uh, what's my notes? What's my notes? Mm. Is that true? Give me one second. Okay, so. I think I'm closing. Okay, so let me go back and open the notes. Okay. So let's see if we can run that side by side. This machine tools. Uh, Okay, so this is the part where we are at. All right, so domain policy management. All right, so we'll go to tools and we'll see domain policy management. So let's go there. Okay, sorry about it. Uh, Okay, so where's tools now? I'm looking for tools. It doesn't look like it will work. I need the tools to show. I need space. Okay, so let's manage. So we'll go to tools. And then what does it say? What's the next thing? Group policy management, right? Group policy management. Where is it? Here. It says... 
expand domain. So look at domain, expand domain, then domain name. So is it not the domain? This is our domain. So we expand it. And then this is our domain name. So we expand the domain. And what's the next thing after domain name? Expand domain controllers. Where is it? This domain controller, right? Domain controller. So we expand that. And then where? Right click default domain controller policy. Where is default domain controller policy? Here, right? Default domain controller policy. So we right click it and then click what? Can you read this? Let me show you. Let me be sure you are. What's the next thing? Okay, you're not seeing. Can you see this? Yes. So after I, this ROC means right click. Right click default domain controller policy. So after I right click it, what should I take? Edit. E edit. Okay. And then after I edit, click computer configuration and expand policy. So I come here. I click edit. Where's computer configuration? Computer configuration. All right. And then do what? Oh, computer configuration here, sorry. All right, and and then what? This is policies, expand it. So I expand policies. And then expand Windows settings. Expand Windows settings, this Windows settings. And then finally take security settings. Where's security settings? Security settings. <laughs> so this is the final piece we are going to. So many of the things you'll be recommending on your white paper, this is where it is done on the keyboard, all right? For example, account policies. So let's open that and see what it is. So we double click. Password policy, let's open password policy. So the organization has agreed that en uh, enforcement of uh, password history should be, here it is not defined. So we see, we, we have observed that because staff keep using the same password that they used two months ago, it is now easy, it has become easier for hackers to use those passwords to gain unauthorized access to our network. What should we do? We have agreed that what, what we should do is make it impossible for staff to use passwords that they have used in the last 25 times, all right? And since we, we change password every month, then 25 times means that they will not use the same password in two years. So we'll come here and define, and we'll say, do not keep password history. I'll say, keep password history 25. So this basically means, if you try to use a password that you have used in the last 25 times, it will not allow you 25, all right? This way we implement that. We apply and we say, okay. Password, uh, minimum password age is not defined. All right. Therefore, there is a threat. Our security is porous. We want to define this so that we can make, can build a stronger security. So we define it. So maximum password age, this is maximum. Your password must be at least. Uh, what does maximum mean? Let's explain. We'll get explained. This security setting, setting determines the period of time in days that a password can be used before the system requires the user to change it. All right? So you must use password for 30 days before the user, the system will now say, change your password. Right? This is where you set it. Apply. Uh, because the value of maximum age is now 30, the settings for the following item will be changed to the suggested value, 29. Yeah, maximum and minimum can be the same, so you it will change the rest to 29. Form. Minimum password age, you just said that. Maxim, uh, minimum password length, all right? When you enter a password like a day, it should not be accepted. Your password must be at least 10 characters long. This is where you set it. Modifying this setting may affect compatibility with client services and so on and so forth. Yeah. So these are these are the places where you set all of this. 
minimum password length audit, password must meet complexity requirement. This is where you say, yes, enabled. So don't just enter uh, a day one, two, three, four. No, it must meet complexity requirement. In other words, it must have, it must contain character, uppercase, lowercase, uh, base 10 digits, zero to nine, and so on and so forth, special character. So if you do not have a password that meets all of this, and yet is 10 characters long, like we said earlier on, it will not be accepted. All of this we call system admin. So hardening a system. And hardening is, is a, it's a security measure. So hardening your system to make it tough, to make it hard for unauthorized as for hackers to be able to come to, to allow them to write them. All right. So everything that has to do with protecting your system via password, this is where we do the implementation for the entire enterprise. Any question? So play around with that. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, account logout policy. Account logout duration. If for any reason some a, mem a user is logged out for, for of this domain, for how long should they be logged out? They should be logged out for a whole day or for 30 minutes or for one hour. This is where you said for 30 minutes. All right. Uh, oh no, because the value of log out, yeah, let's say that one first. So, uh, yes. log out threshold, what does this mean? Account log out threshold, define this policy. What does threshold mean? This security setting determines the number of failed logging attempts before that causes a user to be logged out. So here I'm going to say, because of the, usually this is three, but, but because of the very high sensitive nature of this server, if anybody attempts to log into this system and he, he fails the first time, and then second time the password is still not correct, then log him out completely. He's seen as a threat or as an attacker. So will not allow guesses you know allow him to be guessing until he get the right correct password so after two field attempts login log him out right this is where you apply reset password account counter after how many minutes what does that mean this security 13 determines the number of minutes that would elapse after a field logon attempt before so this is saying you know, earlier on, we said the uh, logout duration should be maybe one hour or 30 minutes. And then here we are saying reset account logout after that time. Even though you are logged out for 30 minutes, after that, you cannot reset your account. If you want to set it to the same thing or maybe a little longer. All right. So all of the management decision as to what to do to secure your enterprise. Where it is related to password, this is the place you come to, to do the implementation, all right? Or like the local one that did not allow you to change it, this one, you change it, group policy management. So you should be able to say at interviews, should, it, should practice this enough to be able to say at interview that, yeah, I've secured, uh, before I gained my Azure IAM experience, I've secured, I've done security. I've secured the uh, what? Enterprises, domain enterprises. And part of the things that I did was uh, to set a uh, password policy, set account logouts, and so on and so forth. All right. All right. So we'll take a short break and then come back and then I just run you through all of this. And no, not all of them, just a few more. And then I'll now leave you to go and practice them. And then we'll move on to something else next time. All right, but uh, before I before we go on a short break, any questions? Now you know where to go to set your password policies. I don't want to be looking at uh, password policy. is a subset of security policies. Account logout policy. 
and I will be looking at local policies. All right. Let's go on a short break, then come back and then continue to look at the different things you can do to further add in your system, your enterprise system. We go on fifteen minutes break. Okay. How many minutes do you normally take? Fifteen or twenty? Fifteen. Okay.
All right, welcome back. <clears throat> Everyone okay? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so maybe we shouldn't do anything new. Let's revise what we've done so far. So ask questions, whatever you want to, anything you don't understand so far. Let's just make sure we we'll get what we have done so far right, and then we we'll can continue from there to me. Well, I'm ready to go on if everybody says, ah, we're fine, no problem, I understand everything you've done so far. Uh, Prof, is it possible to uh, kind of just brush through where we started from the the dashboard, you know, assigning the role and all of that? Okay, let me see what you mean. On the server, right? The domain control. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, let me see what you mean. Uh, uh, daily twenty twenty three. Oh, not twenty three. This twenty four. Day, late twenty twenty four. I hope we did implement. Uh, let's see. Let me hear more. Uh, security policy. Password policy, enforce history, enforce it, enforce uh, length. No, we didn't. But so many times I've logged myself out because I didn't remember my policy. And what about a uh, logger, uh, account logger policy, logger threshold? Okay, so we are good. Okay, so Mayawa. Where do you want us to, to start? Uh, the person who asked the question is saying we should start from here. Yes, yes. Are you comfortable? Okay. Yes, I got it. Mayo, are you comfortable with, did you download the operating systems? Oh, you installed the operating system. You installed the machines, right? Yeah, I so I installed the virtual machine. But I don't know if I have to install, install another one. You can see you don't know, you don't know, you don't know. But you'll be, you'll be here, you'll be at this lecture since now. How many machines did we, did we use here? Oh, um, I installed the virtual machine. All right. you, can, you should know exactly what to do. Then what, what you cannot do, that's where we help. So right now, we, we, we've been on this for about two hours, and we installed two machines. We installed the server, and then we installed the client. So what we started today was to configure them. Okay. I wanted to know whether you successfully installed both machines so that we can start all over with the configuration. And then, so if you follow the, the last lecture, my assumption is you, you successfully installed both machines. So let us start now afresh by configuring those two machines. All right. So... In fact, because we already configured this machine, should we just install a new one? Uh, uh, who asked the question? Yeah, me. Yeah. Right? yeah, we can, yeah, and do a new one. Okay, let's install a new one. Let's install a new one because what you want me to show you here is already configured, so you may not be able to appreciate. Yes. So let's go back to virtual machines. Let's shut down these ones. Uh, let's um, stop my coin too. Power off. And then where's my server? Client controller, domain controller. So I say stop. Power off. All right, so that way they release the resources they are holding so I can use those resources to create new machines. So now let me start, let me create new machines all over from last lecture. So to create new machines, I come here new. What name do you want to call us? Let's, let's call it server two, all right? And then what operating system do we load on server? We load the server operating system, so I take this one, all right? Skip unattended installation. 
I'm really slow now, so that I can cut everything. And if I use these resources, it's going to be really slow. So let me increase resources to that and maybe a little bit better. Yeah. So I've given it enough RAM and enough uh, process. Uh, 50, yeah, 50 gigs will do for storage, but I just increase it a little. All right, so finish. So I'm creating a new mission that I will configure to become my domain controller. All right, so server two, let's start it. So my server two is starting. There's very little that I need to do here. I can just model. So my server tree is loaded. All right, so nothing to do other than install. Uh, so which of these are we installing? The one with desktop experience, number two, right? Yes. Is the one that has desktop experience. That one's in next. Uh, yes, we agree to whatever it is that you are saying here. I don't say next. Here we say custom, the second one. The first one is for repair. The second one is for fresh installation. So we take the second one, I will say next. And then this will run through the whole process of installing our server operating system. All right, so this is going to take a while. So while it's taking, any questions on why this one is loading? Okay. So we're installing this server so that we can build the domain controller out of it, true or false? Yeah. Okay. What service do we need to install on the server for the server to become a domain control. Um, active directory. Active directory active services. Direct. Active, yes. active directory yes. domain services. <laughs> correct. Yeah. Active directory is correct. Or the full name is active directory domain services. All right. Correct. Thank you for that answer. Who was that? Okay, full All right. So what other services must go along with Active Directory before Active Directory can complete its work. It cannot do it alone by itself. There are two other services that must be... DNCP and DNS. DNS and uh, DHCP, correct. DHCP and DNS, correct. Good. All right. So when we install these three services on our server, our server becomes the domain controller. From the perspective of cyber security, why, what is the role of domain controller? What does domain controller do on the enterprise, on the network? It serves the, it's a server that is running the active directory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just said that. So what does the server that runs the IT directory do? From the viewpoint of uh, cyber security, what does it do? Does, for does the uh, the the authentication? Okay, the IEEE identification. The IEEE authorized, identification, uh, authentication, authorization, and the audit. Correct. 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 All right, that's what it does. Good. Now. The general name, enterprise directory, what's, what, what is it called within Windows Enterprise? Mm. Windows Enterprise directory. Uh, enterprise directory has a special name within, if the, if the enterprise is a Windows Enterprise, what is that special name? Um, Active Directory. Network. Active Directory. Active oh, okay. Directory. 
Active Directory. Correct. Enterprise is a network, so Active Directory. All right, good. So, ah, installing features. Okay, so at least theoretically, you understand mm -hmm. all of this concept, which is great. Can you name just one or two? Okay, in identification, what does the system need to know? What do you provide the system in order for the domain controller to be able to identify you? What do you provide? Like the user login. User, user, ID. user ID. Yes. Yeah. In order to authenticate you, what, what do you provide? Password. Password. In order to authorize, in order to set authorization for a user, where do you go in the domain controller to set your authorization? That when this user comes in, you should be able to do this, do that, not do this, not do that. Where can you possibly go to do all of that? Security? Security. Yes, it's generally security because it's so wide. There are many places, so they are all under security features. So you explore the security features of the domain controller, correct? Correct. So one aspect of these security features is what? Maybe one or two aspects within the security. I mean, if you break down security into small, small subsets, what part? One part is uh, one part of security features. Password mm -hmm. security. <clears throat> Password policy is one part of this. All right. All right, so we are still loading. So once it's loaded now, we'll just go through the configuration one more time. So you already answered all of the theoretical questions that tells me that you have the concept, which is great. So let us do the configuration straight away. Okay. So if that's the taking time, let's, then let's see. Okay, so remember that my username is administrator is already taken. So for password, let me just enter daily twenty twenty four hash. Daily twenty twenty four hash. All right, so it's all done. So let me press Control or Delete. Control or Delete. Um, in uh, provide my password day, day 2024. All right. Personalizing my second. All right. Uh, do you want this? Yeah, I can just say. All right, so our server is ready. Let us create a network now. Let us prepare the server for networking. Because computers on the network try money. So the first thing we do on this server, because it's standalone, it doesn't see anybody, nobody sees it. As far as our enterprise network is concerned, not to the internet. So the first thing we want to do is prepare it for network. To prepare a server for network, what are the two most important things that we should do here? Anybody? Go to um, IP and the network adapter. Correct. So let's quickly go to the network adapter and set it to network adapter. Which option do we take? Internal. Which? Huh? Internal network. Internal network. Okay. All right, and then IP. So for IP, let's go to local server. And then we'll see that right now, the IP address is not assigned. So we'll click here, and then we'll right click the network card that we just inserted. And then we we'll go to TCP version four, we'll take properties, and then we we'll assign an IP address. Again, because you don't know all the details, I'm just giving you one that will work. So what's that one? One, nine, one, nine, two, dot, one, six, eight, dot, one, oh, oh, dot, 
All right, this is the real. So once I press my tab, it goes to the next line and automatically give me the submit mark. So I'm, I'm not doing anything about that. All right, so I, I can enter the same number here and I can enter the same number here. 192.168.0. Mm -hmm. This is the only system in the domain, in the network. So there's no other IP to enter other than mm -hmm. right. All right, any questions so far? I need you to be active. We are repeating this so that you can be active, so that I can participate. No. Yeah, you're active so far. No, no, no question. Yeah. All right, so we have prepared with those two. Haven't completed those two tasks that uh, you know what they mentioned. We have not prepared the system for network. All right, so what's the next thing to do now? We promote the server to become our domain controller. All right. To do that, I thought we assigned IP address. Why did not show? Let's refresh. Yeah, it's showing. Okay. So we are done with this one. So to make this server our domain controller, we go to add roles and features. All right. We say start. No, not remove. So we just come here and we we'll click next. Pro based. Okay, you can read that on your own. So this is where we really pick the services. So these are the different possible services that we can integrate. The additional tasks we can put on the server that it can do for us. All right, all of this is beyond the scope of. All we need here is just for this server to become a domain controller. And to do that, we are taking Active Directory, what is it? Active Directory Domain Services, this one. All right, so we'll take that one, we'll say add the feature. So it's taken. So once we do that, and that service is installed on this server, this server becomes the domain controller of this domain, of this enterprise. However, it's still going to warn us. If we go ahead and it's still going to warn us, I cannot work alone. No, I need DACP and DNS. So why don't we just add them right away? DACP and DNS. So with these three, especially the first one, we'll now say next, 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 and install. So what are we doing now? We are installing the services that we would configure later to make this server our domain controller. And like you said, the primary service is Active Directory. That's what it's installing. Now you see that the Active Directory is so important. Without the Active Directory, there is well, I'm not doing anything. Is it, is they it don't do things like that. Uh -uh. No we just tried for me yesterday. Then I was throwing up and everything. I'm not on SPL. Uh, me too. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Okay, so ah, on mute if you want to contribute. Any questions? Any contribution? Meet yourself to talk. So mine didn't ask me to didn't prompt me to you know to have the DCPH server and DNA server. But then I'll try it over again. Yeah, it didn't prompt me. Uh it should prompt you. It should prompt you. Are you sure you are well it asked you it uh, prompted only for AD? AD, yeah, AD, yes. Okay, take only that one and, and uh, go on. Okay. Why did it to prompt? Okay. Are you still with us then? Let's come back to this. So this one says there are two more jobs to do in order to promote this server to domain controller. So let's quickly do this one. 
and here we just say commit close that one is done so the second one is to promote this server to become your domain controller are you still with me should we go ahead should we click yes okay so we click that and this is where we give the name to the enterprise so we don't take the first radio we don't take the second we take the third radio button and here we provide a name for the enterprise because we already used the name side by one let's call this uh, my class my class dot uh, my class dot uh, let's let's just see local let's not involve the internet my class dot uh, my class of cloud or dot com for example let's try that okay so we'll see next I hope it doesn't try to connect to the internet to look for the DNS server of cloud. Would that be safer if we just use local so that we know that it's not connecting? Okay, so this do. So provide the password for the person who is able to, to do this configuration. All right, so we don't want too many passwords, so I just use this single password. Property. All right, so day, day, 2024, all right, day, day, 2024, all right. And then we'll say next. And then here we'll say next. All right, so we'll just wait for the next to come up, to pop up, and then we'll say next. All right, now it's great. Okay, stop now, so we'll say next. And now we'll say next. Next. And it will, it will do all of the check to find out if everything it needs to promote the server to domain controller, if everything is in place. So it's doing all of the checks. All right, so we see everything is cool, so we'll say install. All right. So that's it. Once we have a domain controller, that means our enterprise is ready. We are now ready to start practice. All right, so what feedback do you have? Did it go through? Did the installation go through without the DHCP and DNS? Yeah, in the, in the installation went through, but it, it asked me to promote the server to domain controller. That's the active okay. directory. So yeah. I clicked on that and... Um... And what? Yeah, I'm trying to bring. Uh, give me one second. Is this still in progress? Is he trying to do it? Yeah, still installation in uh, progress. Okay. Uh, all right. But well, you can see mine. Uh, mine says that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I need to restart. Okay. That's it. All right. So we completed that. It didn't. It didn't take up to twenty minutes or so. So it's restarting, and then once it's restarted, the system becomes our domain. All
Okay, so that's for server. Applying computer search. So once you can do it for server, then the, the client is even easier because for client, you don't need to configure anything, just install and that's it. On like server, what we have to, after installation, configure, install a ADS, DNS, and Active Directory, and then configure them. For client, we don't do all of that. We just do the initial installation. So if you can do it for server, then you can do it for client, provided you already downloaded the operating system. The ISO, following the link, provided in the manual. Okay, so what are you doing just to test after this? Any other person? What other grade app do you have? All right, so can we go back to learning the truth then, since there is no more revision? Everybody understand what we're doing. So. Can I just be sitting down watching this now? We know that it's some complete success. Hello, unmute yourself and talk to me. Yeah, we can leave this one and move on to... So what part? Yeah, we can move on to learning all the other configurations. Okay. okay. So let's go back to our domain controller that we already had in place. So we'll right click that and see that now. Mm -hmm. All right, so you can create a user account and then uh, administer the user accounts. You just create one or two more user accounts and set some kinds of authorization for them. And everything we've done there. Yeah. Uh, domain control. Wow, why are you taking so much time? Okay. All right, so let's log in and uh, control our domain. Uh, daily twenty twenty four. All right, so let's uh, see additional tools for securing our enterprise, our domain. So we'll come to tools. We we'll go to to secure the entire domain and not just the server, not just the specific machine. We we'll go to group policy. We'll come here, we'll go to domains, we expand that domain, uh, default domain policy. 
then domain controller will expand the domain controller policy. We'll right click that and we'll say edit. Oh, we're, we're done with this, right? It's not, uh, we finished what we wanted to do here. And then we came to policies and then we came to windows. Yeah, I showed you what I wanted to show you. So this was a security settings. Security settings. Yes. Okay, so since we are here again, let's let's continue from here. All right, so we looked at uh, account policies. We looked at look okay, we don't see local policies. We looked at that. Okay, let us see local policies then. So audit policies, audit policy. So let's double click. So what, what can we do here? What does this mean? You remember auditing? So what should be tracked? Audit account logon events. Should the system track every time somebody log in to this domain? You say yes or no? Yes. By defining that, you say yes. So what should be tracked? Is it successful login or failed attempt to login or both of them? It's up to you. It's not that the more log you have, the more work there is to do and the more resources it takes. So if I say login, both successful and failed attempt, then I, I check both of them and I say apply and I say okay. All right. Audit account management. All right. Define these policies. Audit account, the management of accounts, creation of account. Okay, explain. The security determine whether to audit each event of account management on the computer. Example, account management events include when you create an account or group, when a user is renamed, these all those administrative tasks. All right, the account management by the administrator. Do you want to? Do you want to keep a log of them? Do you want the system to keep a log of them? Yes or no? If yes, is it the successful account management task or the failed one or both of them? So this is where you determine what should be tracked and what should be logged. Is this not audit auditing? The last A of the I three points. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, so this is where you set what should be audited, all right? Audit directory service access. Audit logon events. Audit object access. Every time you access an object, of course. Every time you access an object or you attempt to access an object, even if you fail, we want the system to audit that so that it can keep a lock for us, all right? So these are the things you set. This is where to set your audit. So again, by yourself, don't take, don't just watch and say you know it. Go by yourself. Audit policy change, all right? Change management, audit policy change, and then set all of this. But all of this, you are not doing it from your head or within the enterprise. The organization has a policy in place, all right? The management has a policy in place where what should be set for the organization's enterprise is stipulated in that policy. And then they have a guide that you just take and then you implement everything in that policy guide. All right. So what you whether you say this one to yes or no, yes or no, is dependent on what the policy of that organization says in that guide, not from your brain. All right. You are just implementing what is already written down according to, all right. Okay, so that is it. You can determine what and what. Okay, so now that you know how to audit, let's go one step to user right assi assignment. User right assignment. So what do you do here? Act as a part of the operating system, not defined. Access credential manager as a trusted caller. Allow log on locally. Uh, who can log on locally? Account operators, administrators. So if I want uh, 
let me create one more account and I want that person to be able to log on locally. I just come here and I say add user or group. Uh, I think we had IO last time. Let's browse for IO. Is there a name like that again? Yes, it's there. So add that person. All right. So IO can now log in locally. Not to the domain, can log in specifically to this system without logging to the domain control. Allow logon through remote desktop. All right. So I'm the network ad IO is the network administrator. I want to add IO as the network administrator. So I just should be able to work from home and use the remote desktop services to connect from home to this my domain controller and be able to manage, do all of this work from home. To so allow that, I say allow desktop. Allow log on to remote desktop service. So I say yes. Which, which user am I allowing log on to remote desktop service? Are you? All right. Browse. Is I you there? Yes, I am. Okay. Okay. All right. So are you can now work from home? and do exactly what he would have done if he was here. Back off files and directory. Who can back off files and directory, all right? So this is what I'm doing here. I'm assigning user permissions, user rights. User rights assignment. I'm giving, this is not part of authorization. Expanding or determining what users can do on this, uh, or what they cannot do by way of deny on this domain. Deny program, deny access to this computer from the network. Uh, okay, so the same item. I'll say, well, before they hand over your SAC letter, I'll first of all deny it. But I cannot, no need to even put IO there. I just browse direct. And then I say the name of the person. Of course, uh, ideally, we'll not do this manually, but let's just assume that we are doing it manually. All right, so this is how to do it. We'll find a way to automate it, but, uh, but at your level, this is how to do it manual. Okay, and then we'll see. Uh, okay, apply. All right, so yeah, deny access to this computer from the network. But I shouldn't do that. I still want I to be able to log. So I come here and I say the name. Oh, no, no, what did I do? That no. Deny access to this computer from this one. Uh, yeah. Oh, I just don't default. I do not default. I remove IR. Yeah, both or any of them. I remove IR or I don't define it anymore. Deny log on as a bad job. Deny log on as a service. Deny log on locally. So. I can set user rights. You don't have to know all of them, but if you find three or four that interest you, then just practice them. Shut down this system. Who can shut down this system? Not just uh, anybody. Uh, sorry, Prof. Yes. I don't know yeah. if it's just me, but um, your screen is not really showing clearly anymore. Ah. Maybe it's just okay. me, but they, they look blurry, sort of. Okay, who can confirm that? Anybody? It seems better, yeah. It looks good on your side. Yeah. Any more? Anyone? One more person to confirm? Can I use my computer? Yeah. Looks it's good on mine, too. Okay, oh. you can continue then. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. But, but you get the idea. You know where to go to look around and see what can be done, what cannot be done. So, the authorization. Yeah. Oh, all right. So, the idea is for you to come here on your own and then look around and see what is possible. So that way you can claim that I worked in an enterprise organization where I did this, I did this, I did this. All right. Okay, I think uh, let's look at security options. Many more, there are too many. Don't worry about all of them. Just look around and be able to claim up to, did I say 40? 40 things I have done on enterprise for my organization. I mean, 40 ways I have helped my, my organization secure their enterprise info. That's your assignment, write it down and put them together. All right, so finally, event logs. Maximum application log size, maximum 
security lock size, maximum system lock size, written application lock, and so on and so forth. All right, retreated groups. No, that's that's going way beyond outside scope. All right, so to now view the events to see, yeah, we said you should log in this and log in that. Where do we now see the events that have been? I mean, when I say event, I mean all the logs, the event logs that the system captured because we configured them in audit to be captured. Where do we see them? All right, so that's the next thing. So let's go and view. We just look for uh, event viewer, yeah, event viewer. And then we should see event viewer here. Can you see the event viewer now? So event viewer, I want to see things relating to Windows log, application log, relating to security. So if you click security there, 10,000 of them, you can see uh, uh, what it is day. Uh, I don't buy date. So what happened? Uh, at a particular time or something. But uh, in operations, in reality, we would have another application that will query, that will connect with this back end data, query it and give you exactly what you are looking for instead of you scrolling line by line to look for it. But again, this is just a elementary practice. So we can take a particular event on that security, on that setup, on that system, whatever we want, we can take a particular event double click it and then we'll see what happened there uh system and then we we'll double click so this is the event. the apex development service entered the running state all right so this is about system so it, this may not make so much sense you want to look at uh event locks that have to do with security the ones that you said so we'll double click this and then you say that uh, an account was successfully logged on at this time. All right. All right. Login type three, restricted. Admin. So this is the details about what, what happened, when it happened, how it happened. So this is the event we always refer to about. There's a log. Check the log to see what happened. For how long does the system keep this log? That is part of what you configure on the uh, event log i think somewhere around there you see maximum yeah there's some way you can set this should be kept for 30 days or for 20 days or for 90 days and so on all right so all successful audit and then all feed audit you can see but there's 10,749 of them so that's not easy to manually scroll through but it, again, there are ways that you can. All right, security group. Look at what we did on that security group earlier. It was it was locked. Event ID. Okay. It was locked. Everything, even including what we enable local group membership was enumerated. Wow. Wow. Okay. What else did we change? Special login, then we logged on, and then we logged off at some point. All right, the details, the system has the login event. This event is generated when a logon session is destroyed. So we logged out at some point. All right. So the idea here is for you to know where these things are done, not to really make you honest. All right. So was that clear? Was that clear? All right. So we don't need it at this time. Yes. We don't need this. Even firewall, we are not dealing with that at this time. So I'll remove that. We'll deal with that. We'll come back to that when we cover the topic where we talk about firewall. So for now, we'll talk about Active Directory, we'll talk about group policy, 
What about event viewer? Did we mention event? Okay. Event login and auditing. We'll talk about that one. Event login and auditing. We'll talk about that. Configure and analyze Windows security event logs. All right. Practice setting up audit policies, just like I, I advise you to. You know, remember what we said audit policy? And use tools like Windows Event Viewer to review logs for security incidents. That's not what we just did. Yes, now. We just use Windows Event Viewer to review all successes and so on. Windows Event Viewer. All right. So go and look at them and then try to understand them beyond just that. If you can, don't worry about this other one. You can just look at those ones we covered in class. It should be good. All right. Uh, what else do we need to cover today? I think that's enough for one day. So if you have questions or anything you still need us to revive, I can take it. Uh, all right, I think I was somewhere else. Let's go back to tools. And then I think I was going to show you. So everything on that local security policies we've already covered on that group security. It's the same thing. It's just that here, we are not allowed to edit local security policies. The audit policy we saw earlier on. It's just that we cannot edit, we cannot change here. And if we, if we do change here, it affects just this system. But what we set under the group policy one affects the entire domain. All right. So that's the, that's only the difference. Security options. Yes, we saw all of this earlier on. And then we saw uh, user rights. Yeah. Same thing. Can you remind me what I what I I tried to show you on that to earlier on before we, before we went on to. Or maybe I already showed you. Yeah, I think we'll cover it. Event viewer. So event viewer is here to the place we just look at. If you don't, you don't need to type it from there. All right, guys. So keep practicing with that and then you'll be able to claim that experience. So that's it for that's what we can do. That's how far I want to I want us to go on that. Then the next thing would be. For us to take one more topic tomorrow from the theoretical perspective. And then if there is any practical to that, we'll come back here and I'll show you the practical of the next topic. All right. So I'll update the note with the next topic and then I will publish the notes to the Google Drive where you can view it. It is available to view. I'll no longer be sending notes individually to everybody all right so i'll just make it available there and then you'll be able to view the list so we'll cover chapter three tomorrow and then like i said we'll do the part any question yeah okay what's the update were you the person that is installing did it install successfully? Did it configure? Um, yeah, it's installed, but I had to go back and see how uh, because I think it was asking me to specify the domain information for this operation. Okay. So put in the domain uh name and then did mm. select. Mm. So after saying select, it said credential for the uh for deployment operation. Yeah. So it asked so for using Say that again. Yeah, it's expected to enter a password. Yeah, but it, it asked for username as well. Mm. You want to share your screen? Oh, you already yeah. got password. Okay. Yeah, I can share my screen. Okay, so what's your name? Ade. Ade. Okay. Co -host. Yes. All right, you can share your screen. Thanks. First meeting summary with you. Yeah, can you see my screen now? Ah, uh, yes, it just came up. 
credentials for deployment, uh, Windows security. Yeah, this looks, yes. So what are you doing here? Are you trying to add computer to domain? Uh, okay, um, close here. Let me see how you close this. No, 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 no. You're not doing the right thing now. You okay. need to look at the video. The right thing is the last one. We said that one many times. Add a forest. Add a new forest. Yes, that one. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. I think I was missing it then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go on, go on. Do it. Let's see how it works. Okay. Um, Enter a root domain. Add it dot cloud or add it dot local add it, anything. Yeah. It's only after password, only password. Computer is so slow. Yeah, it's okay, we don't we have time, so no other person is asking questions, so we'll give you the remaining. Yes. Okay, that's not the password. Yes. So it gives the administrator's password. I'll be patiently wait for it to be right. Okay. Delegation for DNS server cannot be created no, because no. Of... next, 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 okay. Yes, yeah. Next. All right. Next. Next, right? Yeah, always next. Unless it does not present next. Yeah. So here, you have to check everything you've done so far and see if everything is good. If it's good, it just goes ahead and install. Mm -hmm. The computer is not so slow. I think it's worth some. <laughs> Uh, all prerequisite checked passed successfully. So you are good. Okay. So click install. Stop. Okay. Awesome. That's good. Any other person want to share their screen too? Yeah. Okay, so that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So you can stop sharing. Any questions? Anybody want to share some? Moyo, what stage are you at now? Yeah. I mean, my or what? Yes, um, I'm still working on it, but I will share when maybe tomorrow before tomorrow. Okay, you're not working right now, your sister. No, I I'm not working on my I'm on my mobile phone, so I'm just watching all the videos. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But once I yeah, just try it, I'll, I'll let you know. Right. Yeah, it should go smoothly. I just want it. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, okay so I covered everything I wanted to cover with you today, and then we have learned a lot. So what is left now is um... yeah. If there are no questions, maybe just put a bit early. Then you continue to practice on your own for the next fifteen minutes, and then uh, I'll update the note with tomorrow's class. What what are we covering tomorrow? I will update the note and then 
I'll upload now. If you want, you can read it before tomorrow. But I guess you'll be so busy trying to set up your enterprise and make sure you practice one or two things so that you can bring any difficulty you have to class tomorrow. All right, guys, I'll let you go if there are no more questions. Because if I go back to, if I come back to showing you additional features, it may confuse you right now. The features that you have learned for one day is enough. All right, so when you create, Users, you try and add them to each of these, and then go to your, uh, uh, go to your client, log in at that user, and see if whatever it is that you configured for the user here is actually working there. Remember your assignment: 40, 40 ways that I help my organization secure their enterprise. So whatever worked, whatever works for you, write it there. I I did this. I blocked this. And then I successfully blocked this. I successfully deactivated this for the user. I successfully user forgot password and I successfully reset password for them. For example, you come here and say uh, properties, reset password. Yeah. So user so forgot password. I don't know my password. Just come here, do give it a new password, then go back there to the client and log on with this new password you just created for user term. And then write it there. I successfully recreated or reset password for the user. So these are the things that we are going to convert to your responsibility as enterprise network administrator in your resume. If you don't have that, I'll not be able to help you. So write down those forty. And they should not be the same for everybody. So. The 40 things you practice will be different from the 40 things somebody else is practicing. Somebody has practiced. So that way we are not copying exactly the same reason. We are using the same format, but not the same content. So write down your own thoughts. Do you know any questions or contribution? Did you call my name, sir? Yes, I said any contributions. No, but I was just thinking in my head. I don't know. This might be okay. out of, but I don't know. So are you saying that as I am engineers, this is what we're going to be doing at all? This is just for us to like, you know, get our hands, you know, dirty a little bit before we get into the main work. Or this is going yes, to be like that. Yeah, the second part of the question, that's the correct one. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The reason I asked so, is, you know, I did I did IT auditing class and for some reason, okay. you know, all this uh when it comes to like access provisioning and the provisioning, things like that, you know, auditors mm. will come in and audit. I mean, IT auditors will come in and audit. Now I kind of understand that, you know, this is part of configurations and what they actually audit. So they okay. are not seeing the they are not seeing the end. I mean, I don't even know the right word to use. So all they are saying is just the proof, but they don't know how, to, like, the whole things are being set up and all of that. So I see why mm -hmm. IAM is more technical than, you know, and it's okay. probably less saturated as compared to it, IT auditing. Yes, um, yes, because it's a bit technical and people, is read, right, right. Yes. people are running away from, yeah. So, yes, yes, all of those experiences are relevant. So this is just, uh, this is not exactly what you'll be doing as IAM, but coming from this background to become IAM, it really makes everything look, they fit more. Okay. Thank you, sir. These uh, services are also available in cloud, but uh, I haven't learned them here. We're not going to learn them in cloud anymore. We'll, be specific, we'll specifically be learning the identification, then access management. All, it, all this is part of access management at the domain level. They will now learn how to do access management at the cloud level. So yeah, very related, one building on top of the other, but we'll see how that is done at the cloud level. 
And of course, because you already understand this here as well, we don't need to talk so much there because you already know. Just like what you what you did in auditing makes more sense now. So what we are going to do in IAM in cloud will make more sense because you already understand this one, this part. Okay. Yeah. All right, sir. All right, good contribution. Any other contribution? Okay. All right, so let me let you go then. I'll spend the remaining 10 minutes to practice. Is that okay? Or you still want to hang around? Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Okay. All right, everyone. That's it. All right, good night. All right, all right. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.